what I would hope and pray that this does is it encourages us, it, it, it motivates us, it, it convicts us, it changes us um, through the PDJs that we get more of God and we, we just, a new understanding, a, a new hunger to be able to um, walk towards God, walk in His presence. So I want to thank you for joining me uh, here for PDJ. And I titled it, um, the PDJ, Does He, in quotations, capital H-E, Does He Have a Home? Does He Have a Home? And I want you to ponder that and think about that um, as we read through some scripture. Uh, does He have a home? And we know who He is when it's capitalized, is God Almighty, Jehovah. Does he have a home? And I want us to read from Ezekiel 45. And um, I want us to read verses 1 through 3. And it says, Moreover, when you divide the land by lot into inheritance, you shall set apart a district for the Lord, a holy section of the land. Its length shall be 25,000 cubits, and the width 10,000. It shall be holy throughout its territory all around. Of this there shall be a square plot for the sanctuary, 500 by 500 rods, with 50 cubits around it for an open space. So this is the district you shall measure, 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 wide. In it shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. And we can go back even further within Moses where God says, hey, I want you you know, to build this, this ark and this tabernacle that you're going to take apart and you're going to uh, uh, move with you and, and this is going to be a place where I'm going to come to the holies of holies and and we know that there was a place that Moses had um, outside the camp as well that he met with God face to face we can even read within David where David you know hey I have a home but you know God doesn't have a home you see where I'm going that's why I I I, I want to ask you does he does Jehovah have a home does he have a home? Are, 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 are we inviting him in? Is there a place within our home where God can live? See, we know that whenever David went to move the ark, that they didn't move the ark quite the way um, that they should have. And it, it kind of frightened them. It kind of scared them Where to the point where David's like, man, I'm not bringing the ark in. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not. We're, we're, he started looking around to try to find the closest place that he can move got into. And it says in 2 Samuel 6, verses 10 through 11, it says, So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obadiah, the Jedidite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obadiah, the Jedidite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obadiah in all his house. Do you see what Obadiah did? He, he, he made a place for God. God had a home. When David showed up and knocked on his door, rang his doorbell, uh, you know, he answered the door and David's like, man, I, this ark, uh, I'm not sure how to move it. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, do you have a place for it? God needs a home. Did you, did, I, I, I believe that, you know what, uh, Obed-Edom, you know what, kind of said, look, hey, honey, kids, um, I need you to move all the furniture because God's going to get the best. Let's move him in the living room. The TV needs to go off. Turn the satellite dish off. We have the presence of God coming in this place. We have a movement of God. We have we have a presence like the Shekinah glory. Just, man, let's give God the best. It's kind of like the lady with the prophet that, that built an extra place for the prophet that when he came into town that he would have a place to stay. Does God, does he have a home where you're at? Have you invited him in? Does God have a place in your home? Do you have a prayer closet? Do you have a place that you meet with God? Do you have a place that you read God's word? Do you, does, does God have a place in your home? I, I just want you to ask yourself, does God have a place in my home? Because I believe this is the problem this day and time, that we haven't made a place for God in our homes. This is the reason why we're seeing the, the things that we're seeing now. Because God has not really made a permanent place within our home. Because if he's not in your home, I, I got a question if he's in your heart. 
Because when God, uh, I, I chose to give God, because I, I'm talking out of me and my, my, my heart, my desires, and, and I'm talking out of my, my past relationship and, and what I've walked through and in my life and in my testimony, because there was a time that I didn't walk with God and God didn't have a place in my home. But when I invited God into my heart and he, he moved in my heart to, and he took control and I gave him control and I surrendered my will for his will, then he permeated all, all of the rest of my life. He, he became a, 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 a part of my home. He became part of my work. He became part of my lifestyle. Because if, if there's not a place for God in your home, I've got a question, does he have a place in your heart? Because when he came into my heart, he started permeating throughout the rest of my life. He started being intertwined and, and, and becoming things that uh, of all aspects in all areas of my life. That means, you know, he, he started becoming uh, my thoughts. He, he started becoming uh, how I talked and, and he started becoming my lifestyle. He, 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 he came, became a, a, a resident that wasn't going to move out. Does God have a place in your your home? Does he? Because I'm believing that this is the problem in just not our country, but throughout the world, that we haven't made God a place. We haven't been like Obedin, where a man just moved God right on in. Don't worry about it, David. I have this. You know what? God's going to have the best. I'm moving out the, the living room furniture. I'm moving out the 75-inch the TV. I'm moving out the social media. I'm moving out everything that means everything to me to make a home for my God. Think about it. Because you should permeate your walk, your thoughts, your heart, your vision, your goals how you treat others, how you speak about others, how you speak about yourself. It, he, he, he should become part of your language. He, he should have a home in all areas. That doesn't mean that, that we're perfect, but that means we're striving to be perfect. That means we're, we're walking out our life from glory to glory. But see, the problem is this day and time is, is we think that the pastor is going to, to save us. But it, that's not the case. I had to prepare a place for God in my home, just as well as you need to prepare a place in God for your home. And, and we think that God is only a one or two hour thing during the week. And that's on the time that we go to church, if we go to church. And that depends on with whether the weather's good or not. I, can I be honest here? Because whenever things turn out to be hell in our life, we want God. But then we don't need God or want God or desire God. We haven't made God a place in our home that's permanent through the good times but we darn sure want them through the bad times what would our lives look like if if we had a, a place uh, if God had a, a place if he if he had a home he had a place that he could walk right through our front door and he knew he, the refrigerator was open to him he knew that that he had a living quarters he knew that he had a shower he had a bathroom what, what, what would it look like because I believe this day and time this is the problem this is the problem with society, is we haven't made God a home within our lives, right? So since he's not part of our home, he's not part of our DNA, he's not part of our speech, he's not part of our lifestyle, he's not part of our ways, he's not part of our desires, he, he's not. We have too much of the world that came into our home in the presence. See, we have to understand that the Obadiah, his house was blessed. The Lord blessed him because he made a place for him. And too many times we as Christians, we're not receiving the blessings of God because he doesn't really have a home. He doesn't have a place to stay. Can I just be honest? Because we haven't moved out something in our lives called our will for him to come in. We haven't surrendered. This is the reason why we're putting up with, with 1% or less than 1% of the population reigning and ruling about racism and, and about poverty and, and sickness. You know, I, I'm here to tell you, you know what, uh, we have the news, we have social media, we have all these negative things. And, and But when you walk outside your house and, and you walk along your streets and you see one race, 
but that one race has many different colors and, and we're all saying hi we're all loving each other we're all there for each other I don't see what the what the media wants I don't see what the devil's trying to trying to expose I don't see the manipulation and the witchcraft what I see is the love of God but but the only reason why I see that and others see that and majority of the people see this is because we've allowed God to have a place to call a place of home he, we, we've allowed him to come into our home and we see things through God's eyes. You can't be less of something. You can't be less black, less white. You can't be less Hispanic, right? The next thing Coca-Cola is going to do instead of being less white, what, what are they going to do? They're going to uh, you know, remove the polar bears and put in zebras now so they can show themselves less white. You are a child of God. We are all child of God. And if we allow him to come in our home and we give him a place of rest, we give him a home, that a habitat, that he's a resident, that a place that he can stay, that he changes our life, that he comes within our heart. And not only in my heart, that now he's in my home. Now my children are affected. Now my neighbors are affected. Now, now I, I love everyone. Now I'm going to stand for God. Now I'm going to vote according to God. Now I'm going to live my life according to God. Now, you know what? It's okay that, that we, we might not agree, but it's not okay to hate each other. We have to love each other through this. We have to pray for each other. We have to pick up each other's burdens. Do you see what I'm saying? Is I'm seeing a society that, not, that, that hasn't given God a home within their hearts, within their physical homes. There's not a place. And since God doesn't have a place, he can't change it, the place. We need to surrender. We need to give God our hearts. We need to give God our homes. It's not even our homes. I own nothing. God owns all things. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Is if we want to be a blessed nation, we want to be a blessed home, we need to allow the presence of God. We need to give God a space. We need to give him a room. We need to give him the whole house. We need to give him our whole heart and allow God to be God. I, I want this message to touch you. Because too many times as Christians, we claim ourselves to be Christians, but we really not, we really not, we, we, we have not made a home for God. Because he's really not a resident of our heart. Because when he becomes a resident of your heart, that means you're going to have a relationship with him. And when you have a relationship with him, you don't look through man's eyes. You don't look through Satan's eyes. You don't look through the world's eyes. You're going to look through God's eyes. And we're going to realize that, you know what, our, a lot of our neighborhoods are good. We do have some corrupt people. We do have some people. That, that, but you know what? The good can outshine if we choose to stand. We have a church that is multicolored. That means we have Hispanic, we have African American, we have white, we have all kinds of, you know, it looks like the God's waiting room. It looks like heaven. This is what our neighborhoods look like. And we're allowing small percentage of a people to dictate. It's time that we allow God to come in, move into our hearts. That we start changing the bad. We start exposing the darkness to light. Because see, Obadiah was blessed. That means the light was in the midst of his house. That means we, we are light bearers. We're mountain movers. That, that, that means we should be able to go out to our neighbors, to our jobs, because God has a home within our heart. And we start changing and removing the darkness within others' lives, within our communities, within the nation, so God can get the glory that his light will shine. That means we teach people how to, to fish instead of just being an enabler and, and giving them. That means we, we teach that individuals, instead of being a deadbeat dad, you're going to take ownership and be accountable. You, you are going to get a job. The government's not your job. What I'm trying to say is we've allowed too much of the world to come in our home and we've made a home for the world instead of for God. And now our thoughts are wrong. Our ways of thinking are wrong. 
And we need to invite God in our hearts and give him a place to rest, give him a home to stay, give him a room in our house that we could sit down in Midrash with him, that we could sit down and have communion with him, that we could sit down and learn how to repent, how to take accountability for ourselves, how to have respect for each other, how to love each other, how to pick up each other's burdens, how to turn the things off that we need to turn off, that, you know what, corporations need to be the corporation and the churches need to be the churches. And we need to be the children of God that we're called to be. It means we can have righteous anger, but never have hate. That means we need to love everyone. That means we need to, to be able to invite them into our homes. We need to invite them into to our communities. We need to, to, to invite God into every area of our lives. That means we're brothers and sisters. That means we can receive the blessings that, that God wants us to receive if he has a home. Do you know, you, have you ever went to a place I'm sure everyone's went on vacation, right? You've went and visited relatives. You went and visited, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, friends, or or maybe you went to, uh, um, you know, to the beach or wherever you go on vacation in the mountains or whatever. There, you you packed your stuff, right? You you moved into the motel. You moved into the room. You brought your stuff. That means you brought your money. You brought your possessions. You brought your food. You brought your your presence. You brought a good attitude or you brought a negative attitude. Whatever it is, right? What I'm trying to say is whenever God moves into your home, he, he, he brings in his blessings. He brings in his favor. He brings in his anointing. That's all I'm saying. Let's make God a home. And we're going to start seeing our communities change, our churches changed, our whole world changed. Amen? Let's give God a home. And it starts with our heart. Amen? Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, Father God, to come to you, Father God, with PDJ, prayer, devotion, and journaling. I thank you, Father God, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that each and every one of us, that we receive you and make you a home, give you a home to stay. That's our heart, Father God, Lord, that we surrender, Father God. And Lord, as we surrender and we give you our will, for your will, Father God, Lord, that, that we start changing our communities, we start changing our cities, we start changing the things that need to be changed, Father God, Lord, for your glory, Father God, Lord, that we start moving out the racism, the hate, uh, the lack of respect, the lack of consider, the, the lack of consideration, Father God, because Lord, Lord, you've been considerate for us, you've been respectful to us, you've been been loving to us, you've been uh, gracious to us, Father God, and Lord, we we owe that to our neighbors, Father God, we owe that to each and every individual. You said to pray for our enemies, and instead we hate and talk about our enemies. And Father God, that's not what you 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 want for us. That's not that's not what you want. And Father God, Lord, as we move you in, Father God, Lord, and you make a home, we make a home for you, Father God, just as Obadiah did, Father God, Lord, your blessings, Father God, your favor and your anointing. That we have to be changed because we have to be changed in your presence, Father God. So Lord, we invite you in that we are changed, that I'm changed, Father God, Lord, that there's no pastor that can save anybody, Father God. Lord, that we have to work out our own salvation, Father God. We have to invite you into our heart, Father God, into your home, Father God. That's our heart, Father God, in order to receive salvation. And I pray, Father God, for those lost souls. I pray, Father God, for a revival. I pray, Father God, for those that, that call you as Lord and Savior, that, that there's a renewing, Father God. Lord, that you, you are truly in the house, Father God, within their heart, Father God. Lord, that's going to change. That we as Christians, we're going to be able to stand up and say, you know what? We've had enough of this. We've had enough of the writing. We've had enough of the slothfulness. We've had enough of what you're saying. We've had enough of the division. We've had enough. Not for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. For me and my house, we're not going to put up with that. And for me and my community, we're not going to put up with that because we're going to grab hands with our brothers and our sisters. And we're going to pray through this. We're going to work through this. The churches are going to grow based on your word. It's going to be the truth. It's going to be you, Father God. And too many churches, Father God, has not made uh, that place a home for you. But Father God, Lord, change whatever needs to be changed that, that our church, Father God, 
becomes a home for you, Father God. Just as within, Father God, Jacob said on the mountain that truly, surely God is here, that his presence is here. This is a home, a temple for him. And this is the gateway. Father God, allow peak worship to be your home in a gateway for you. Allow my life to be your home in a gateway to you. Allow everyone else's heart and, 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 and their families to be a home in a gateway for you, Father God. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Tell you what, there's just a stirring, a righteous stirring that we need as Christians to, to we, need, we need a righteous stirring and we need to stop looking at our neighbors and getting upset with them and start looking at the devil and saying, you know what, the manipulation stops right here. I haven't been praying for my neighbors like I should. I haven't been praying for my family. I haven't really made God a, a home. And today I'm choosing to make God a home and it starts within my heart. God, my heart is yours. Move in. It's your home. I'm purchased with the price. That's all you have to say is, Lord, forgive me my sins. I receive you as Lord and Savior. You died and shed your blood for me. You are saved and set apart. Let God move in and allow him to use you. Because I'm believing, I, I'm believing that there's going to be a revival, but it starts with making God a home. Obadiah was blessed. He was favored. His household was favored. There was an anointing. There was blessings like, oh, just we can't even think of because he allowed God to come in. He moved out the living room furniture. I'm here to tell you, move out the living room furniture and allow God to move in and you're gonna have blessings, you're gonna have favor, there's gonna be an anointing, there's gonna be a peace, there's gonna be a joy, there's gonna be a love, and it's gonna change not just your home, but your neighbor's home and your community's home, because um, let me just tell you, the enemy is trying to win throughout all things, through fear, through color, through racism, through everything, um, but he's, he's a loser. Let him know he's a loser. Go right to Revelation and read the book of Revelation to him and let him know where his destiny is. And then you can look him in the eyes and say, I know that's where your destiny is, but let me tell you where my destiny is. We're not having this conversation again. My destiny is with the Lord because Jesus is my Lord and Savior because I've allowed him to make a home in my heart. I'm telling you, if we allow the churches, if we, if we as the church and, and, and we, we allow God to make a home, revival's going to start. Racism will go out. Hatred will go out. The lack of respect will go out. The lack of consideration. I mean, I'm telling you, we're going to have we're going to have a nation that loves the Lord, loves individuals, that's going to seek righteousness. There's going to be anointing. There's going to be a favor. There's going to be healing. There's going to be poverty is going to be destroyed. Diseases will be destroyed. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters will come together. Racism will be destroyed. And this is all just nonsense. This is the lies of the devil. And it's time that we allow God to move in. So Satan will move out that the world will move out that's the problem we have not allowed god to move in so we look like the world and we act like the world let's let god move in so the world will move out so we'll see that you know what there's a lot of good things in this world there's a lot of individuals in this world that come together that's all kinds of different colors all kinds that we're going to see love we're going to see poverty destroyed. We're going to see trafficking destroyed. We're going to see drugs and addiction destroyed. We're going to see individuals that slothfulness will be destroyed because we're going to teach others how to fish instead of just giving them a fish. I, I hope you receive it. I hope you get it. We need to make God a home. So let me ask you, does he have a home? Does he? For me and my house, he does. And I hope he does for yours. Love you guys. See you guys when? Tomorrow night for Bible study at 7 o'clock. So love you guys. Make sure you submit your prayer request. We are praying for you. I want to be praying for you Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. I come live um, with prayer. Um, we have a lot to be praying for. So let's let's turn it in. Let's, let's send in your uh, prayer request and let's be praying together. Amen. God's doing a lot of miracles, a lot of works. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, God's moving. Let's keep the movement going. Let's keep the prayers lifted up. And let's let God be God. Amen. Love you guys. See you guys tomorrow night. Bible study. Bye-bye.